Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, The CPA Designation, Your Key to Canadian Career Success. Today's webinar will begin with a brief introduction of West Global Talent Bridge, as well as the presenters, followed by a presentation by CPA Ontario, which will lead into a question and answer period. Today's webinar is brought to you by West Global Talent Bridge. The webinar is hosted by myself, Shauna Marie Kerr, and I'm happy to welcome Carmen Jacques of CPA Ontario. Throughout Carmen's presentation, our fantastic program coordinator, Sarah Hua, will be coordinating the webinar and assisting with any technical issues. For those of you who haven't joined us before and may not be familiar with Global Talent Bridge, Global Talent Bridge is an initiative of World Education Services that is dedicated to helping skilled immigrants fully utilize their talents and education in Canada. West Global Talent Bridge offers webinars, Pathway to Success seminars, e-newsletters, networking events, program referrals. To get invited to these events, make sure you subscribe at west.org slash ca slash subscribe. Carmen Jacks, CPA, CGA is a student recruitment manager with the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. In addition to her CPA designation, Carmen also holds a Bachelor of Commerce degree from Sydenham College, University of Mumbai. A skilled accountant with a wealth of experience in international industry, Carmen offers exceptional knowledge and expertise in helping new Canadians navigate their transition into Canada. Carmen, thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much, Sean Marie, for that brief introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Carmen Jock. I am the Student Recruitment Manager at CPA Ontario. Thank you all for joining me today to learn more about the CPA designation, your key to career success in Canada. So I will be speaking to you today about what it means to be a CPA, the path towards the CPA designation, and answer your questions during the webinar. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, as Sean Marie mentioned, please forward them via the question box. I will answer all questions at the very end of my presentation. So the CPA designation boasts over 200,000 members in Canada with over 87,000 in Ontario alone. As one of the most recognized and respected accounting designations in the world, becoming a CPA is your key to a prosperous and fulfilling career. You are looking to make a significant investment in yourself and your career. You also want to know if the CPA designation is the right designation to invest in. And let me tell you, yes it is. The CPA designation is your key to a successful career. CPAs are highly valued for their financial expertise, strategic thinking, business insight, management, and leadership skills. CPAs are trusted leaders who navigate through complexity to drive success. A CPA designation is your passport to work anywhere around the world. It will provide you with the toolkit of skills and knowledge that are in high demand by top organizations globally. There are over 12,500 Canadian CPAs who work abroad over 3,000 in Hong Kong and China, and over 1,000 in the Caribbean. The Canadian CPA designation is in demand around the world and gives your career portability. Here are a few international companies 
and organizations that employ Canadian CPAs. Every industry, every organization, everywhere requires accounting professionals. A professional accounting designation is seen as a requirement for individuals to progress to senior accounting and finance roles. There are great opportunities for accounting professionals in Canada right now and in the years to come. So not only does the CPA designation allow you flexibility to work in any industry, the demand for the CPA designation is reflected in the average salaries that we see among our more than 87,000 members in Ontario. The CPA designation is a credential that is in demand even in tough economic times with an employment rate that remains consistently high. So in short, the CPA designation provides financial security and the opportunity to pursue the income that you aspire to. So here are five most lucrative industries in which an Ontario CPA can work. According to the report on business, 1,000, 75% of CFOs in Canada are CPAs. Now, one of the greatest things about the CPA program is that you can learn anywhere. You can study wherever you have access to a computer and the internet. So this means that classwork can be scheduled around your personal and professional work. You can also start working towards your designation at any time. But my question to you would be, why wait? There is no time quite like the present, and that is today. Now, before I can proceed to speak to you about your pathway to become a CPA, for all our internationally trained accountants that are participating in today's webinar, here is specific information for you. I'd like to clarify, an internationally trained accountant is someone who has successfully completed the education, examination, and experience requirements of a professional accounting body outside Canada and is a member in good standing of that body. We have several different pathways for members of accounting bodies outside Canada. But you must be a member in good standing of another accounting body. So if any of you have started but not yet completed the requirements for admission, you may want to consider completing them before beginning the process in Ontario. For more information, I would encourage you to please visit cpaontario.ca forward slash admissions forward slash internationally trained accountants. The CPA certification program is designed to meet the needs of industry, government, and public practice by ensuring that new CPAs have the strong foundation of knowledge and skills they need to succeed. The CPA certification program includes academic study, a professional education program, examination, and practical experience requirements. If your studies do not meet the required subject area coverage required for entry 
into a professional education program, you may choose to take these courses through a post-secondary institution or CPA Ontario's preparatory courses. The CPA certification program, your way, means you have some flexibility, different options, and you can make choices as you go through the CPA process. So let's look at some of the choices. But where do you begin? The first step is to submit your post-secondary transcript for an assessment with CPA Ontario. I'll provide more information of how to do so at the end of my presentation. CPA Ontario will determine whether or not you have completed the subject area which is typically covered in 14 courses required for entry to the CPA Professional Education Program. That's a CPA PP. So if you are missing some, you may complete them through a post-secondary institution or the CPA preparatory courses. The preparatory courses are designed for those who need some or all of the prerequisite courses required for admission to the CPA Professional Education Program. So no matter what your previous education discipline was, for example, you could have a Bachelor of Humanity, Psychology, Physics, you, can, you could pick up all the necessary courses you require through our preparatory courses. Admission to the preparatory courses require 30 credit hours of post-secondary study that's equivalent to a one year of full-time study or three years of practical work experience. The 30 credit hours may be in any discipline. So that means you could have any kind of undergrad degree to begin the process. So no matter what your previous education discipline was, you can pick up all the necessary courses you require in the preparatory courses. Here is a list of preparatory courses. All of the core and non-core preparatory courses will be offered every semester allowing you a more flexibility when, when planning your education pathway. This is starting an effective semester three, that is a summer session that typically starts in June and wraps up in August. Now let me speak to you about a professional education program. The professional education program is the core of the CPA certification program. This program trains you to be a professional accountant. Once you have completed the recognized prerequisite courses, either through a degree credit courses or a combination of degree credit courses and preparatory courses, you will enter into the CPA professional education program. This program is designed to be two years in length from beginning to end. The professional education program consists of six modules that build on one another. The PP begins with core modules, core one and core two, that provide professional level knowledge of financial accounting and management accounting. The CPA PP electives, elective one and elective two, allow you to tailor the program to fit your career goals and your career aspirations. The program ends with Capstone 1 and Capstone 2. Capstone 1 is designed to build your leadership and communication skills and Capstone 2 prepares you to write the common final exam. All these modules are delivered using a blended learning model 
combining online learning, self-study, classroom learning, and teamwork. The common final exam is a summative final evaluation for the CPA program that evaluates candidates against the skills in the CPA competency map. All candidates must demonstrate breadth in all six core competency areas, that is financial reporting, management accounting, strategy and governance, taxation, finance, audit and assurance, and must also demonstrate depth in two core competency areas. Now, depth one must be in financial reporting or management accounting. Your depth two is from one of the other co-competency areas. As a professional accounting and business designation, the CPA requires that students possess the strong people skill necessary to be successful in the business world. Each activity in all stages of the program has been designed to target key technical and enabling competencies. The profile of a CPA is described in the CPA competency map. To explain further, the CPA competency map describes the knowledge, skills, and proficiency levels you must have as a CPA and is the foundation of the CPA program. Getting professional experience while studying is an essential part of your success. Our program is designed to do just that, to continue accelerating your career as you study. This allows you to apply the knowledge that you gain in the CPA program to your job the next day. This enables you to improve your workplace performance from day one as you apply each new concept with direct relevance to you and your organization. Before obtaining the designation, all aspiring CPAs must have full-time work experience through which they develop their applied skills. You require 30 months of paid, relevant work experience. The profession at CPA Ontario will accept up to one year of experience earned before registering with CPA Ontario. There are two options available for you to attain your work experience. Number one is work in a pre-approved program, what I'd refer to as PPR, or experience verification, that is EVR. This provides you lots of flexibility to meet the practical experience requirement. So in pre-approved programs, the employer has worked directly with CPO Ontario to seek approval for specific roles or areas in their organization to train students. So I'll cite here an example, and which is only a hypothetical example, of Canadian Tire. All of you know Canadian Tire is a large, large organization and has a large accounting and finance team, with possibly over 100 positions in accounting and finance. For our example here, say a senior financial analyst role is being pre-approved. What does that really mean? This means Canadian Tire, the employer, has worked with CP Ontario, the profession, to map out the functions of a senior financial analyst role to the competencies that are required of a newly designated CPA. After the completion of 30 months, in that specific role, Canadian Tire, the employer, will report directly to CPA Ontario 
that the student has completed the required work experience. In experience verification, students gain qualifying practical experience through relevant employment. So this means you could work anywhere in any organization, any sector, as long as the experience is relevant. The students will work directly with the profession, that is, will work with CP Ontario to assess if the work experience qualifies. You would do this, you would submit reports, detailed reports for evaluation. So here, the onus is on to you as a student to either take additional responsibilities, change roles, or even employers, if your current responsibility no longer develops the required competencies. Having an approved CPA mentor is required before we would recognize experience. Now those in a pre-approved program will be matched with an approved CPA mentor within the program. To help with an optimal match, those in the experience verification are required to find their own. Now support is available from CPO Ontario to find one through a mentor match portal. Now, if experience is being reported as prior experience that is capped at 12 months, then no mentor is required for the period of prior experience. As a student in the CPA program, you will have access to CPA Ontario's highly effective career services. CPA Ontario's career services team offers career coaching that is professional guidance to students when it comes to making the most of their experience and expertise and, adv and advancing their careers. A job board uh, that CPO Ontario Talent is CPO Ontario's official job board where you can search and apply for jobs, set job alerts, or have employers scout for future CPAs with our opt-in resume portal. Career development events. CPA Ontario hosts a number of networking events such as foundations, career development and networking day to help our students connect with industry professionals and experts. Workshops and webinars includes live in-person workshops and free online webinars. Examples include webinars on say personal branding, job search strategies, networking skills, to name a few. So here are some next steps for you. While you are overseas, you would like to connect with your university or your post-secondary institution to request official copies of your transcripts, that's your mark sheets, in a sealed envelope. Sealed would mean closed envelope that's not open and, and is from your post-secondary institution. I'd also recommend requesting a copy of your course syllabus for the programs that you have completed. It would also help to obtain reference letters from your employers, current and past. Stay connected with your employer or the individual that you report or have reported to as you know that 12 months of past or prior ex experience is accepted. And in order for us to accept that prior experience, your supervisor or the individual that you report to is required to validate that work experience. So keep an email and the contact information of your current and past employers. For all internationally trained accountants, please um, 
work towards obtaining your letter of good standing from your accounting body. Now, CPA Ontario accepts two forms of transcripts from international post-secondary institutions. So we do require official transcripts in a sealed envelope, that's in a closed envelope that's not being opened and originates from your post-secondary institution. If the transcripts are not in English, we would require an English translation of those official transcripts from your post-secondary institution that shows the degree conferral mailed directly from that inter international institution to CPA Ontario. If you're shortly going to be arriving to Canada soon, then I'd encourage you uh, to even carry those copies of those sealed envelopes with you. And since you're requesting those documents, I'd also recommend uh, requesting more than one copy of sealed envelopes from your post-secondary institution. You never know when it may come in handy. CPA Ontario also accepts a full WES, that's the World Education Services Report. That's a course by course credential evaluation carried out by World Education Services through the International Credential Advantage Package, ICAP. Through this service, WES sends directly the transcripts that they have received to CPA Ontario. Now the associated fee for this report is sent by WES and is to be paid directly to them. You can submit your transcripts, all your docu documents, including your application form 618P1 to CPA Ontario for an assessment while you are overseas. So your transcripts can originate from your post-secondary institution. Your application form you will submit online that there is a transcript assessment fee of $150. Once CPO Ontario receives your complete document package, that is your transcript from your post-secondary institution or WES, uh, your application form, that's the 61A P1, within six to eight weeks, we will have your transcript assessment results. The results will be emailed to you directly to the email address that you provide us. The, the transcript assessment result would show you the courses you have to complete. That is a subject area required for entry to the CPA professional education program. Uh, for internationally trained accountants, I would request you to please visit this website and you can jump start the process right while you are overseas. Please visit cpaontario.ca forward slash admissions forward slash internationally trained accountants. So here are our contact details. CPA Ontario's website is gocpaontario.ca. Here is where you can find all program information of how to become a CPA, and the benefits of becoming a professional accountant. If you have questions regarding your assessment or program registration, our customer service team is available and will gladly assist you. They are available Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. You also have my contact information in case you have questions after we conclude this webinar. So with this, I have come to the very end of my webinar. Thank you very much for taking the time to learn more about the CPA program. I will now take the remainder of this webinar to answer most of your questions that you have been sending in. Okay, so we've definitely covered a lot of material and I see we've had a lot of activity in our chat section. So Carmen, I'm happy that you are ready and willing to answer some of our audience questions. Before we get into specific questions, I just wanted to make a note that for anybody who is submitting questions about immigration-related questions, 
We'd like to make a note that only regulated immigration lawyers, consultants, or paralegals are licensed to provide legal advice. You can find a list of these professionals on the Government of Canada's website, and we will provide the link to that in our follow-up email. But for the, the purposes of this webinar, we will only be answering questions specifically related to get, getting your CPA designation. So our first question um, from one of our audience members, they have enrolled in a CPA program and they are a member of ICAI, but they're wondering about the possibilities they could explore without getting their designation. Sort of what, what are some alternative careers that an accountant could explore with the skills that they have? That's a great question. Thank you, Shona. So, uh, the alternative careers, I could say, is um, number one, um, being a member of uh, an accounting body outside Canada, as well as, um, and specifically of the ICI, that's Institute, Char Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, my first and foremost recommendation would be is to really explore uh, the opportunity to seek membership at CPA Ontario through the member of a specific accounting body outside Canada, Pathway, that's Pathway 2, where we have a memorandum of understanding with ICAI. The uh, individuals get a superior advanced standing in the program in terms of um, getting most of the professional education PEP modules exempted and they come into our capstone level, provided they satisfy all those requirements. So number one, that is the first kind of recommendation for you and my best advice would be, yes, if you want to be an accountant here, I think this would be your fastest, quickest way to get into the labor market as a CPA in Canada. Number two is, uh, you could really explore any other co career opportunities that the, the labor market is uh, open and to answer the specific question, I would say, just being a member there, right, would really need to understand what is uh, your kind of background, what are your skills that you really have presently that will help you bridge into the labor market in Canada. Because even being a member and an accountant there, you could have your own specialization. Are you in tax? Are you in kind of um, in public practice? Is that what you're seeking out here, right? Because again, if you're looking at licensing in um, a licensing pathway in Canada could be very different. So I think that question is really specific, but to be very broad, you have you have tons of opportunity, and it's really kind of seeing what is your skill set that can be transferred here, and um, that you'll have those options. Yeah, definitely some great points that Carmen has made. I know this is a topic that we speak a lot about at Global Talent Bridge. Is sort of what are your transferable skills and. Um, the, the skills that are portable that you can use in alternative or related careers. We actually did a webinar last year all about alternative and related careers, so I would encourage anyone to go and, and check that out if you're interested. As well, you can always send us an email at gtvcanada at west.org to subscribe to our newsletter where we often feature articles, tips and advice, sort of all about that topic. So another question we have here, uh, one of our audience members is keen on getting their CA designation, but they're unclear about how the merged accounting designation in Canada would impact this. What does it mean that you know CPA, CGA, that all of those designations have merged? So in terms of, I, I should go back to my first slide, the profession in Canada has unified. So for this for you and for everyone else here, you have one accounting designation, one regulatory body, and um, yeah, so it is one. So if you're a CPA um, or a CA overseas, if I understand that correctly, yes, then you can kind of explore again one of the pathways to membership that we have. I would strongly encourage you to visit um, cpontario.ca forward slash admissions forward slash internationally trained accountants. I would, um, being a CA from uh, from one of the countries, you would be eligible uh, if you meet all the requirements um, to explore one of the five CPO to pathways to membership for internationally trained accountants. Yeah, so just to reiterate, as Carmen said, previously in Canada, you could choose to be either a CA, a CGA, or a CMA. All of those designations have now merged, and there's only one regulatory body and one designation, and that is the CPA designation. 
So we have a question here from someone who graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree. They did study some subjects such as economics, commerce, and accounting. How could they pursue the CPA designation? The fact, I know you, you touched on this a little bit, so the fact that they didn't graduate with a specific accounting degree, that doesn't pose any barrier to becoming a CPA, correct? That's correct, Sean Marie. Um, so technically, you could, be, you could be in any discipline, right, uh, to pursue the CPA program. Uh, the requirements are subject matter coverage area and a recognized undergrad degree to be eligible to enter our professional education program. So given that you've got a bachelor in arts and the degree is recognized, you would have to complete uh, the subject matter coverage area either through our preparatory courses and or through a post-secondary institution. So there are equal in courses that are offered um, at post-secondary institutions across Ontario. So as long as you're taking those equal in courses that, that map up to our preparatory courses, and you should be fine. And are any of those prerequisite and PEP courses available for online or distance education? Our preparatory courses are offered either online or in class. So it's a very flexible learning environment. All our courses are part-time, giving you the opportunity to really work and study. So PEP, no, the PEP course is a blended learning environment, uh, is to a blended uh, course offering. So it, it contains in class, online. Uh, when I say in class, there is one mandatory workshop, weekend workshop that you have to be attending in class. And the other is online teamwork. So it's, it's totally blended. It really is designed to make you that well-rounded accountant. So just to clarify, I know you had mentioned the customer service hours are 9 to 6. Is this in the Eastern Eastern time? That's correct, John Marie. It's CP Ontario's uh, customer service hours are from 9 a.m., from 8 a.m. to 6 a.m. Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. Perfect. And again, um, we will be sending out the entire PowerPoint presentation, including that slide that Carmen graciously shared with the contact information for CPA Ontario, as well as her own contact information. If anybody has further questions or upon a further review, you think of a question that you'd like to ask, you can always send an email directly to CPA Ontario. So maybe, Carmen, if you can explain a little more about the mentorship opportunities available, or sort of what opportunities are available for students in the CPA program to gain experience inside of Canada. CPA Ontario has a number of career support services that we have. It could be career coaching to really provide guidance to students when it comes to making the most of their careers. A great opportunity here is our job board where all employers in Ontario looking out for CPAs or students in our program would post opportunities. But moreover, I think um, one of the greatest aspects of you being enrolled in the CPA program really speaks to a lot um, about yourself, about the fact that you're motivated. You just, you're not just uh, where you are. You're looking at advancing your career. You're looking at making the most of your current experience and expertise by pursuing the CPA designation. So this in terms bring, brings you that marketability and visibility that you're really looking out for, which, you know, which directly translates into you've been very successful in the labor market. So we have a, a question specifically about where the audience can find a list of those pre-approved training programs. I'm guessing those are available on the CPA Ontario website? That is correct. That is correct, Sean Marie. So I would kind of say, if even, even if you go onto the search bar and you kind of type in pre-approved, you will find the list of pre-approved training programs. But again, here is an opportunity to really kind of, that's one, one path. But I always kind of recommend there is that open opportunity where you can gain your valuable work experience in any organization in, of any size, in any sector, as long as it's relevant work experience, which brings you a lot more flexibility. One of the questions we got is, other than math skills or specific, you know, the ability to work with and understand numbers, what are some of the main skills that a CPA would, would need to be successful in their career? 
to my best knowledge, I think uh, having analytical skills is great. But uh, just to experience, the key skill sets that really uh, that come out as a CPA or are required as a CPA is commitment, discipline, right? Um, and this could go off in any, prof in a, this can really apply to any profession. Uh, so being disciplined, being committed, because you do require at least 15 to 20 hours a week. It is a part-time program, right? So it means juggling between your work life your family life and continuing with the program and being successful. So you do need that commitment, you need that discipline to really succeed. If you don't, it's you're kind of you're losing out. And I think that's an excellent point sort of that you bring up, Carmen. And one of the things that I think at Global Talent Bridge we especially like to highlight, all of those skills that Carmen just talked about, being flexible, dedicated, um, having that work ethic and, and commitment, all of those are things that as an internationally trained professional who's exploring moving to Canada, in and of itself, the decision to move to Canada shows that you already have a lot of those skills. Um, and you already sort of have that mindset to, to put in the work and be successful. So I see here a question from another audience member who has a WES evaluation. Um, and they're asking whether the evaluation can be used for the CPA assessment. So as Carmen mentioned, WES is one of the, one of the um, evaluating bodies that CPA will accept for admittance into their program. And the course by course with the ICAP feature, we will send directly from WES to CPA um, if, if you request that. Yeah, so to further add to Sean Marie's um, point here, we do accept WES assessments, but um, in terms of CPA Ontario will still, still complete an assessment in order to enter the CPA program. So really to kind of see where you stand. So it doesn't, uh, the West assessment doesn't, um, doesn't mean that that is exclusive in terms of it. You still require to complete the CPA assessment. But as a result of having a West assessment, what would, instead of, instead, so let me make, let me make myself clear, instead of obtaining your official seal transcripts from overseas, what you would do is, at one point of time, uh, in order to complete that assessment that you have currently with WES, you would have requested your overseas institution to send those transcripts to WES. So through this ICAP service, what WES would do is, those official transcripts that have been received by them, they, uh, with your authorization through the ICAP service, they will send it to CPA Ontario. So you would still have to, as I mentioned, complete your application form. You wouldn't have to send your official transcripts unless you've taken additional courses that, uh, that have not been covered under that best assessment, then yes, please uh, send those official transcripts from your post-secondary institution you would still have to pay CPA Ontario's $150 transcript assessment fee. So once we've received as we, the WES assessment, the transcripts to the WES assessment, the application and the fee, we will jumpstart the process to complete uh, the transcript assessment. You will receive your results in six to eight weeks, which will kind of then confirm the subject matter coverage that you're missing and you would have yet you would have to complete in order to pursue the professional education program. And that's one of the things that we always sort of stress at WES with our credential evaluations. It's so important to check directly with the regulatory body that you are hoping to designate or license with um, to make sure that they will accept WES credential evaluations which type of evaluation they need, um, sort of just all of that additional information that Carmen just provided for CPA Ontario. It varies from licensing body to licensing body, different industries. Um, so you really do want to make sure that you're contacting the regulatory body before you get a credential evaluation, just to make sure you're getting exactly what you need. So one of our last questions here is, I know, Carmen, you had already mentioned roughly how long it takes to complete the CPA courses, but is there a maximum time limit that somebody has to complete all the required courses within, um, or is that information that they would just have to potentially contact CPA Ontario to discuss on a case-by-case -case basis? So the CPA, P, P, I mean, 
PP must be completed in six years from the initial start date. Okay. Right, and they have seven years in all to really uh, complete um, the education, that's the courses and the experience requirement and get admitted into membership. And I'm not sure if you'll have this information sort of off the top of your head, but in terms of tuition or registration material fees, do you have an idea roughly how much that the cost would be for that, the cost associated? Or again, is that something people would have to look on the website for? So our professional um, preparatory courses, um, the fees, the courses like from five, $500 to $700. Again, I would, it all would depend on the advanced standing that you receive after an assessment. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to come up with a kind of a ballpark figure. I'd encourage you to visit the website in terms of really having details I'm a, uh, under course fees and schedules. Everything is very well listed. Again, um, another piece to be considering here is um, you don't really um, pay the total fee upfront, right? It's you, you pay course by course, you enroll for one course, you make a payment for one course, and it's a part-time program, so it also gives you the opportunity, again, to be working, studying, you're not disrupting your regular career, and you're continuing with your, with your regular life, with your life as well as you're advancing. So I think that's, that's another piece, because sometimes you say, oh, do I have to put up front a, a few thousands, or it's not that. It's a course by course fee. And I think, again, just going back to what Carmen said earlier, the CPA program, from, from what I've learned from Carmen today, is all about, as she mentioned, flexibility and options. So really taking your situation and adapting what you need to do for your individual situation. So it sounds like a great program for, for a lot of people to explore.